You can unmute them. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you. Hello, it is 11.20, it is uh, time for the first tea session. It's a short session, so we're gonna get started. I think most people are still enjoying the uh, very nice uh, break. <laughs> And maybe they will trick or, trickle in. Having a little mic, uh, mouse trouble, sorry about that. So uh, we should be familiar with the note well, for those of you who've been to our meetings before. <laughs> uh, Basically, this governs uh, your participation in uh, at the IETF, and the important thing to take away is, is that anything you say here does become part of our record. We have both audio streaming and video, as we have become accustomed. Uh, please uh, speak up at the mics when you discuss, and when you come to the mic, please start by stating your name so those that are remote can uh, uh, know who you are. That also helps with minute taking. As usual, we're doing our collaborative minute, minute taking using Etherpad. I'll pause here for a moment for folks to jump on. Please help out by uh, capture, helping to capture comments that are said. It's particularly good if, uh, if you say something to go look at Etherpad and make sure your name is recorded properly and that your comment is appropriately captured. That's When you do that, it's very helpful. We also are using Jabber. If I can ask a few people to jump on, I'll jump on in a moment uh, also. And that way, folks who are remote are able to ask questions. So there's no changes in our working group organization. Uh, and Matt is, uh, remains our secretary and he's been very helpful. He's working um, remotely, uh, so unfortunately he's not in the room today. So we're gonna run through the normal um, status pieces that we typically do. We've had four recent RFCs. Uh, that's really what we're supposed to be producing, so it's good to see when that we, we have uh, some products coming out of the group. We have one document that is in the editor queue. It is uh, the TE topology document, as we know that that was something we worked on quite a, a while, and it's, it's a, quite a significant piece of work. It has been waiting for the, um, what is the types module, which is that we just recently passed last call. So we should be able to move this out of last rep, um, sorry, misref fairly soon. Uh, that said, a couple of different comments have come in on that document. One of them is pretty straightforward, is, is that there's some alignment necessary to make with the, current, with the latest uh, TE types document. That's pretty much a no-brainer. We can take care of that in queue. There were a couple of other comments that are harder to deal with in queue, and um, uh, we expect that those to be brought up on the list. And there'll be, it's really important for working group members to take a look at the issue being, issues being raised, excuse me, and to discuss how they would like to proceed because um, what, I'll, I'll steal a little of their thunder by saying that we have a choice. And the choice is, is can we do something that's workable with the current document and go forward with publish it, publishing it? Or do we want to bring it back to the working group to come up with possibly a more optimal solution? So it's a decision of, um, of optimality versus what is good enough. And we certainly don't want to publish something if it's wrong. So if there's something wrong in the document, we were going to want to bring it back to the working group. But if it's just about optimization, we as collectively as a group have to decide which path we want to go. So please pay attention to that discussion when it comes up on the working group.
This font is way too small. Um, we have a one hour session uh, now. Basically, we had requested a two and a half hour session, which is our traditional uh, session length that we normally sort of just barely fit into. We, uh, with the experiment that's being run uh, this week with not having Fridays, the two and a half hour sessions were done away with and we had a two hour session and uh, we were hoping to squeeze into that two hour session. We really couldn't. And that's the reason why we scheduled this at the last moment. We're gonna take care of a few uh, working group documents um, uh, in this hour and then continue in our second session uh, with the rest of our agenda. And it's nice because we do have enough time to have some good discussion. We have not received any new liaisons. We do have one outstanding or one older liaison that uh, um, is still out there. And if you uh, uh, have any comments or thoughts on it, the working group is the place to discuss it. Uh, nothing new here in terms of our IPR process. We do formal polling uh, both uh, before adoption and before or as part of working group last call. The really important thing here is, is if you contribute to a document, please respond to this as rapidly as possible to keep our documents being processed um, efficiently. Uh, we continue to have a lot of discussions that happen off list among authors. And a certain amount of discussion is, is good. But I do want to remind, or we want to remind the authors in particular, but other working group uh, uh, participants, that if you have a, 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 an issue with the document, if you have a topic, that, and particularly on a working group document, that you think requires a decision, that should be taking place on the working group list. If you do it among the authors and come to decision among the authors and then present it to the working group, you've actually failed the process because a working group document is owned by the working group. It's not owned by the authors. So it's really critical to make sure that when we want to make a change to a working group document, we have consensus of the working group on that change. Consensus of the authors, excuse me, does not matter. Consensus of the working group is all that's important there. So please have your discussion on the uh, working group list, involve everyone. Uh, the active players may not change, but it gives an opportunity for the whole working group to understand the discussion and understand the conclusion and to um, provide input if they so choose. Uh, so the last slide here is, is that we did have a uh, work, we did have a discussion on the working group list related to our charter. So we had a number of um, sort of private discussions um, that we had heard that there were some questions on the charter and saying that it's a little dated and we wanted to do an update. So we start, we started a, uh, the discussion on the, on the list of um, a, pro a proposal that we'd come up with. We had some very good feedback and good discussion. We did updates based on that. And the final version was sent around and was uh, for, uh, accepted basically by those who chose to participate on the list. And um, the results are still, are, are, the details are still available. And if you're interested in a red line version and how we got there, that's also available. Just go look on the, ma on the mailing list for charter and you'll find a link to it as well as find the, the, the current text. Charters are actually owned by the IESG and uh, shepherded or managed by the area director, uh, Deborah. And um, so at this point, we believe the working group has done the job, provided input to our AD on how we'd like to see the charter changed or updated. And it's now with her and the IESG to, um, uh, to basically adopt or uh, to decide whether or not it gets put in place. And um, I don't think, uh, Deborah, do you have any concerns or shaking her head? No, so we expect this processing to, to happen over the coming weeks. Um, if you have, haven't looked at the changes, <clears throat> excuse me, the um, objectives are outlined here. And if you're interested, please go take a look at the, the uh, version uh, that was posted to the, the working group uh, list. And with that, I think that's okay. Good morning.
you guys hear me? Yeah. Sorry. The So there are 11 documents listed here. Uh, these are not on the agenda for this week. Uh, so I'll quickly walk through the status of each of those in the next few slides. First up are the two uh, PC and native IP documents. This is experimental work that we uh, adopted uh, early this year. The authors did do an editorial scrub, and uh, they did provide revisions for both the documents. Uh, so please do go over the changes. And if there are any questions or concerns with uh, the work that's being done, please do bring that to the list. Next up is the PCCC use cases document. Uh, we have a new editor on board for this. Drew has the pen on this for now. Um, there was a revision published for this last month. And uh, the authors did align that with uh, the text in the PCCC extensions document. They added a couple of new use cases and also uh, updated an existing one. Uh, if there are any concerns with the direction that's being taken by the authors, please do bring that to the list. They are seeking uh, feedback on the work that's being done. Next is the RSVP RMR extension document. Uh, there were no changes made to the draft since the last IETF. Uh, the authors are currently looking, to, looking for uh, signaling options for catering to ring topologies with express links. Uh, if you have any review review comments or feedback, uh, please bring that to the list as well. Next is the T metric recording document. Uh, we did not receive any status report for this. Uh, there were no changes made to this draft since last ITF. We uh, still have some outstanding comments that need to get discussed on the list. Uh, this draft has been around for a long time now, so we would really like to uh, see that uh, get progressed. And if there isn't any interest, maybe uh, let it die. Uh, if there's anybody here from the other side who would like to uh, give a quick status on where things are, that would be useful. Yeah, this is Zafar. Uh, the comments, uh, I spoke with you last time. I think they're from a long time back. Uh, uh, It'd be good to refresh those comments. We're willing to refresh the document, address those comments, and close it off. They are in the archives. So yeah, I know. I I spoke with you last time. Okay. Uh, we need to look into that and address. That. We are willing to address those. Okay. okay. Uh, I mean, if there is any issue with uh, finding cycles in terms of editorship, would you like to have some help getting this progress? Or yeah. Yes, sure. I'll be open to help. Yeah. Any anybody here willing to help Zafar out uh, to progress this? Show of hands. How many people are interested in this document? <coughs> so we we do have a few hands. Are those who are interested? Is anyone willing to uh, help bring this document to closure, as in become a co-editor? on the document? Any hands? Any volunteers? OK, um, so I'm not seeing, we're not seeing any hands. So that to, to, to us, that's an indication that there are people who are interested, but not all that willing in pushing it forward. So I, we're at the point where either you have to close, get this done by the next IETF, or we're going to just move it to dead state, because it's going on too long. OK, I, I think we'll take it. OK, thank, thank you. you. Next is the tutorial draft that uh, discusses how the various TE models that we are putting together uh, need to be used. Uh, there was a revision published for this. Uh, a section on handling bidirectional tunnels was added. There are, there are various uh, features and functionalities for which uh, sections need to get added. Uh, there's currently no hurry in uh, getting this to the next stage. But that said, uh, please do uh, review this as and when you can and reach out to the authors on the list if there are any missing uh, pieces. Next is the use cases document for SF-aware topology model. Uh, the text in this has been uh, moved to the 
uh, SF aware topology model. Uh, so this is the end of the road for this particular document. Uh, this morning I did move this to a uh, dead state. Next is the L3T topology model. There was a revision for this published last month. Uh, the authors uh, added a JSON example for how this model needs to get used. Uh, there is some pending work in terms of aligning with the latest version of the T types module. Uh, once that gets done, this should be ready for a uh, young doctor's review. Excuse me, this Igor. So uh, basically, uh, just one uh, point about tutorial. There was one uh, big request, uh, basically saying that we need a section that is dedicated to uh, packet-only uh, T networks and uh, how this works. So we need a volunteer, uh, basically an expert in packets network to to do that. So um, basically, we need a call for a volunteer. Is there anybody in the room who would be willing to participate in this work? Yeah, we'll pose that question on the list. Next is the SRT topology model. Uh, there was a revision published for this as well. Uh, the scope of this has been uh, reduced to SRMPLS. Uh, there are a few, there were a few uh, missing attributes for prefix sets and adjacent sets and uh, for MSD as well, that those were added. Uh, they, it, this needs a round of review before it can progress to the next step. This is the last slide in this deck. Uh, this is an update on the two RSVP models. The base RSVP model uh, is ready for a young doctor's review as far as the authors are concerned. Uh, the RSVP T model uh, needs to undergo a split and then a round of review before it can, uh, before the authors can claim it's ready for a young doctor's review. That's where things stand. Uh, it's my understanding that this uh, next version can be done very quickly. And if that's correct, and I'll look to the author just to nod his head. So Tarek, is not a, uh, please come to the mic if you want to say anything else. But with that uh, um, understanding in mind, I think it makes sense for the drafts to be go to Yang Doctor Review together. One of the comments that we got as far as the TE types is that it was a little difficult doing that document in isolation uh, because of the uh, Dependencies. lack of context. Now that said, there are still some good comments that were made on the list and we are looking forward to the TE uh, types authors to address them rapidly so we can get that document submitted for publication. Um, so there's still value, uh, but we think it would be good to bundle these together. Tarek from uh, co-author. So yes, we're committing to do this split in the coming couple of weeks and uh, and hopefully we'll do the review and the last call together. Thank you. Uh, next, Tarek, you're next. If you want to go backwards, I'll do it. Okay, just tell me. Okay, good morning, uh, everybody. I, I'm hoping everybody can hear me well. If not, I'll get closer to the mic. Yeah. Okay, so this is a, uh, a an update on the Yang data model for traffic engineering uh, activity that is covered by the following two drafts. Uh, my name is Tarek. I'm presenting on behalf of the co-authors. Uh, Did you go too far? Yes. 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 Okay. In terms of the uh, changes, uh, summary of the changes since the last I ITF meeting that we've had, uh, we've done a split of the, the documents, and I'm going to go over uh, that, that split in details in the coming slides. Uh, there were there was a review <clears throat> on one of the documents, and we've received uh, a number of comments that we addressed as well, and we will go through them in subsequent slides. I'll close off with uh, next steps and asks uh, towards the end. Okay. Um, so, uh, 
from the last IETF, we have presented and agreed on a restructuring of the draft uh, Yang-TE to split it into two uh, to do two standalone documents, one to contain the common T types, and the other one is to cover the MPLS-TE tunnel, uh, MPLS technology uh, specific modeling. And for this purpose, we've created these two uh, drafts that I have up there. Uh, for the T types draft, it progressed and it has undergone a working group last call, as well as we've done a review uh, from the working group, specifically from Matt. We've received uh, uh, review comments from, uh, from Matt, as well as the Yang doctor from Yan. So in the two slides that uh, are upcoming, I'll go over the, the, the review comments that we re received and how we went about to resolve them. <clears throat> uh, this slide talks about the comments from the Yang doctor. Um, the first comment was to clarify the usage of ERO subobject index. So uh, we've addressed that by uh, replacing this by an explicit route. Uh, it's meant to be an explicit route um, uh, object or hop, and um, it's in the ERO list or explicit route list. We're using an index to um, identify an entry in this list. Um, it's not a leaf list because an entry can be repeated, as you know. Um, we can have multiple node IDs in the same ERO list. So um, we've opted for having an index as the key. But we will address by adding text to, to, to describe that and how it's used. The next comment we got from the doctors, uh, Young Doctors Review is the use or uh, need to set more defaults uh, in the model. Uh, the team has um, on purpose tried to avoid setting defaults uh, unless it is dictated by a standard or RFC. And we've let the different vendor implementations set their defaults. Obviously, for interop, they would have to change the default so that it matches uh, on both uh, party implementation. Um, so this is the approach that we've taken. If you think that we need to dictate a certain default and a certain uh, parameter, then it's the time to speak about that. Uh, the third comment we got is the use of um, dash ID in the parameter naming. Um, and they are not uh, used as keys in the list. So these are something like node ID or link ID. Um, so in our uh, application, we don't use these IDs as keys uh, because they can repeat in the same list multiple times. So if you, we've used a specific index as a key. But there are IDs that identify a network element in the in the network itself. So we still want to call them xxx-id, but it's not a key. And hopefully the young doctor would be okay with that. Um, the last comment we got was to be consistent in terms of the uh, identity naming, uh, lowercase, uppercase. We we had mixed uh, usage and we will align to the Yang recommendation of lowercase. On this slide, I'll go over the, the, the comments that I got or we got from Matt, and we thank Matt for that. There was a, a missing identity for one plus one LSP protection. We will add that in the model. Um, there was a TE optimization criteria which covers two metrics. Um, in fact, we are using this um, in the topology model, this identity, and uh, we have a similar identity which encompasses more metrics. It's called the objective function type, and, and we will replace the, the topology model, the new identity, and retire this one. So we will be addressing Matt's comment with this. Um, there was a comment made about uh, we are using a normative reference to the other models and the types, and that makes those dependencies on this type model, and uh, we wanted to avoid that to begin with. So we will remove uh, any reference to the importing models uh, and the T types uh, draft so that it can progress on its own. 
And the last comment was uh, about the TE topology ID uh, scope. Uh, is it local scope? Is it globally uh, uh, unique in the network? Um, so we've, we've, we will clarify that this ID is unique within the provider and client. Um, so we'll add text around that to describe how it's allocated and the scope of uniqueness. So in terms of the, uh, uh, the mother uh, document, uh, yang-te, we have split it, as I mentioned in the previous slide. Before the split, we have made editorial uh, changes and restructuring to the document. And we did the split for MPLS technology uh, module to stand alone in a, in a separate dra a draft. So in terms of the documents and how they stand right now, we, we have uh, the main document, yang-te, and it was split into three documents. The Yang-DE will contain the uh, technology independent or technology agnostic uh, parameters. And we have the second uh, document, which is MPLS specific. And the standalone third document is the common TE types. This is how the organization of documents um, has resulted up to date. There was probably a, sorry, I missed one slide. Yeah, that's the one. So in terms of next steps, uh, the TE types is progressing and we've addressed the comments and we're following up on the resolution with uh, reviewers uh, and hopefully it will progress to publication. Uh, with respect to the Yang-TE draft, uh, it is ready for working group last call and the Yang doc doctor review to follow. And lastly, the, la the last document uh, still needs to undergo a couple of uh, uh, rounds of editing and review before we ask for the uh, working group last call. So that's, that's our plan in terms of progress and update. Igor, go ahead. Yep. Uh, hi, Igor. <coughs> um, so uh, there was a comment from Jan Doctors with respect to, of defaults, right? There are not sufficient number of defaults set in the types. And I think it's a very valid comment. Uh, <clears throat> basically, when we do not set a default, uh, we require like active choice, right? This is like a choice architecture issue. And active choice require uh, basically a good understanding of all options, even for things that you do not really care about. So I, I know 90% uh, of the time when people have choices, they always go with defaults and this is a good way to basically uh, nudge uh, what kind of uh, valid choices we as co-authors expect. Okay, so I think uh, we should take this particular comment quite seriously and put uh, defaults uh, like a reasonable from our point of view, uh, any place uh, we think so. Anyone else has a counter view to that uh, about defaults? Yeah. I have a small comment is if, um, I mean, it's controversial uh, setting a, a certain value on a parameter. Uh, people, different people might, diff might, might think about it differently. And so if you think we have to have a consensus on the value and probably the best way is to write or uh, write a dra separate draft to uh, set such parameters uh, if you think that they should be set as default. Yes. And so um, the comment that I heard the authors say, this is Luke, by the way, the author say is that um, the only defaults that are specified are those that come from documents. Given the scope of how we are going to use these types and the different technologies and the different environments, um, I personally, so I'm speaking as a contributor, uh, I think that's a very wise choice. Um, and that uh, otherwise what we'll end up with is a default that's very appropriate for one of us is gonna be very inappropriate for another of us. And by us, I mean an implementation running in a particular context or a particular technology. So that's my view. Uh, <clears throat> the point that I was eager again, the point that I was trying to make is that Basically, no default, it means that you have to do uh, active choice, okay? So uh, 
the models are usually uh, written in such a way that you may care only about like a small part of the model and uh, you all, uh, just like when you set up a, a software, okay, you always go normally with default, right? You do not pick up options uh, whom you do not understand and uh, to, to provide a customized solution, right? So uh, uh, basically, in some cases, it, it should be like a, a you know, deliberate choice to say no default, please uh, pick up the option. But in many cases, uh, it should be a reasonable option to set, right? So why not? Hi, Iowa here. Um, so I think for the defaults, I I would say it's um, it's strictly like case by case. Um, so in the past like implementation and interop experience, I would feel some of the defaults might be necessary, but not all of them. Um, um, I think like it could be done either by, um, you know, if you really care about the defaults because different implementation needs to be, uh, you know, on the same page when doing interop, it has to be explicitly specified or you could use a policy, local policy to define the defaults I agree, Ivo. If if you if you think there is a parameter that is very important for interop, and there is a default that you would like to propose, I think the best way is to put it out on the list and let's talk about it. <clears throat> Just one last comment. So basically, when you said defaults, you do not preclude to put any choice you want, right? It's just basically what uh, uh, would be normally a good idea to set in this case, uh, but. Uh, yeah, if you do not have any defaults, it means that you have to go through all choices and uh, it, it could get confused, people. So now that you have, uh, anybody else has anything on that topic uh, before we jump up? Okay. So now that you have done the split and you have the TE types yeah. module, uh, you should let the RSA editors know that there's no, I mean, they can fix the misref. And there were also a couple of items uh, that you listed that are addressed as part of the Young Doctors Review that may have a bearing on the T topology model. That's so correct. Take that to the list as well. Yeah, we will be sending an email about those and and see how we. Uh, yeah. So there were multiple options how the topology model draft will progress. Um, for for things that are. Um, Necessary to align the topology doc document, uh, TE topology document, with the finalized version of TE types. Right. Um, th that I think is sufficient to uh, put a proposal out on on the working group and get agreement on that, and then put it, give it to the RFC editor, and have them make the changes in edit in editor notes. I mean, that's part of the reason why we we block. We have this misref state is to take care of, to ensure we don't end up with misalignment between documents. I see. So, you know, we're, we're, we're actually take we're doing exactly, um, we're covering exactly the case that misref exists for, so that's good. Um, there was, I'm, I, I, I know there were some other, um, right now, off-list discussions about um, uh, more substantive changes that are not necessary to align with TE types, but based on um, some implementation experience. Uh, that is that. That's what it falls into the category of one of those things that has to be discussed on the list, and we'll see where we want to go with that. Okay. So the two items that you had in the slide deck, which is mostly identity ref, addition of identity refs, and using a specific grouping that's already there in T type. Right. Yes. That would that would fit well into this uh, category where the T types you made changes to the T types, so it, uh, adding, I mean, changing the mist ref took care of that. So, okay. Uh, yeah, take it to the list. We'll have the okay. Sure, the list. we will list them. No, no problem. Okay, thanks. That was it. Thank you. Thank you. Young. Excuse me. One uh, one question. Basically, uh, uh, question to the chairs. Right? Do you think we can uh, ask for last call for T tunnel model? At this point, I didn't hear that we actually did it.
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Um, my name is Young Lee. Um, on behalf of many uh, co-authors and contributors, I'd like to present um, uh, service functional IoT topology Young model. Oops. Just uh, right click. Sorry. Oh, it doesn't work. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, this is a status. I think as um, Haban uh, gave some um, heads up about the um, use case document that was used for this topology model. Um, I think use case now having a hard time uh, in the uh, AD reviews to move uh, uh, because of this is informational. So um, uh, the co-authors made a decision to put uh, use case as part of a topology model into the uh, appendix. Um, so if this is a um, good direction, I like to, if it is not a good direction, I'd like to hear from the working group uh, today. And, um, and second thing is that uh, this draft does not model um, service function and VNF resource abstraction in, in, in this model because um, leaving it to SC, NFP, and other organizations who specialize uh, VNF resource model. Um, and we, we just maintain reference to um, the VNF type uh, for future use. Uh, if we have a good model from other organizations, we just point it to and we can use their uh, resource abstraction. Um, but just in case that um, some model that may not be defined by SC and FB, then maybe ITF can future uh, define those resource model. I think one um, use case I can think of is um, a regenerator model. Uh, I think uh, one of the use cases regenerator as a service function uh, that might be worked on uh, in TS or C camp working group down the road, but. Uh, we don't have that um, you know, work uh, started, but I just want to give you some example. But mostly, I, we believe that SCNFB should come up with a good resource abstraction model. So we're going to adopt that. Okay. Next. Scroll. 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 So, for the, so for the types, you currently use strings. Uh, hmm? You use a leaf ref or? Uh, yeah, I'm going to show. Okay. Yeah, the, the, just go back. The other way. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So if you look at the model that we augment basically a tunnel termination point from a T a topology and uh, we leave service function and tunnel termi terminations and, um, and uh, we use a service function ID uh, that reference to a, a service function down the road. And also we point to a service connection uh, point, which uh, is a kind of access node that the resource is located, so we, we use this two ID to reference, but um, abstraction is not here, just it's a pointer. Okay, yeah. So, next step is I think the model is ready for young doctor's review, and draft we believe it is ready for working group last call at this moment. Comments? Uh, so uh, if you scroll back, the IDs, you said they're pointers. Um, it's a string. Right. Yeah. So what are they? This is to the terminology that's being defined in other groups? Right. OK. Mm -hmm. um, I have to say, I looked at the tree, but I didn't look at the definition. I didn't. Uh, do you have an idea? Do you list where those definitions are um, in the document? Yes. OK. Yeah. Great. OK. So uh, please, this I know this was a discussion point at the last meeting. Um, so this is how the point that was raised about uh, the identifiers and the other groups is being addressed. So it's really good to go look at it. Um, we had talked about whether it made sense to talk to the SFC group at all about this. Yeah, uh, actually, I talked that? to Jim, yeah. who is also cause of this document, and he said they don't do that there. Okay. Yeah, so they defer to here. I mean, they refer to working T's or NFB, you know, SC, right? Okay, okay. great. Okay. Thank you. You can click. 
you want to go backwards, you tell me how uh, this this came. Okay. Good morning. Uh, my name is Sergio Belotti. I'm going to update about uh, uh, draft on uh, uh, path computation uh, RPC. Okay, uh, first uh, the credits uh, to all the people that is working also on this draft, uh, Carlo and Francesco that uh, is not here, and all the people, Tarek and uh, the guys from T-Tunnel, for which uh, on which we, we work together to have um, uh, a document that is aligned with the T-Tunnel model. Uh, and uh, thanks for uh, all the discussion about uh, the uh, clarifying the, the, the issue for the path setup uh, and uh, the suggestion from uh, Drew about uh, the verification phase that has been added uh, uh, in the document. Try the other one if that's not working. Try this one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, the summary of the changes, so we have uh, added text to clarify it, uh, uh, the point that has been discussed in the mailing list uh, regarding the fact that the path uh, being set up is not necessarily uh, the same as the one returned in, during the path computation. And, um, and uh, we add text uh, because uh, a new phase that has not been provided in the, in the old version of the path computation, uh, that is a verification phase is needed to check if that uh, the, 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 the real path that is actually being uh, set up uh, meets the required end-to-end uh, -end metrics uh, and constraint. Um, then we have updated the young model. Um, Aligning on the fact that the path, the, the, the model is able to return the matrix that are used to pack, to make the path computation. But uh, now is also uh, the possibility to uh, allow requesting the path SLG and affinities uh, to be reported uh, in the uh, feedback uh, of uh, path computation. And then we corrected bugs and issue. Uh, as uh, providing the, our GitHub. Yes, it's working. Okay. <clears throat> One of the open issues that is uh, remain um, open uh, is regarding the TA tunnel uh, attributes. We have a long discussion about the fact that uh, we consider that uh, we have, uh, uh, we would need uh, uh, a subset of uh, um, attribute that is used in the tunnel um, and uh, uh, but uh, in the previous uh, itf there was some comments regarding the fact that uh, uh, some attributes could be used uh, um, by policy based but computation um, policy is not yet uh, uh, specified uh, there is discussion and the issue 31 regarding uh, this issue in the in the github uh, frankly speaking there is no clear outcome on the mailing list uh, how to proceed in the sense that uh, if uh, we need to assume that uh, the policy is not needed and so we can select a subset of the attributes uh, needed for path computation uh, provide that uh, the set of attributes has not been uh, discussed in uh, the details so this is uh, our, uh, some clarification would be needed to close the point. Um, I, Excuse me. Do you want to discuss these uh, now uh, at the end on the list? What are you thinking about the open issues? Uh, I think uh, maybe the, the, the mailing list would be the, 
the best things in the sense I don't think that uh, just discuss now can uh, close the point. I don't know. Okay. Maybe yes, but uh, well, per perhaps to, to uh, get people thinking about the the list discussion. Exactly. Uh, yeah. State your maybe state your position on what even if it's just you personally. Yeah. Uh, what how you think it should be resolved, and uh, to get to get some people thinking about how to talk about the issue. Yeah, because we already provide our personal I know, but, 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 but uh, yeah. But, uh, but people are listening to you now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> they don't always read the list. So we, we do have 15 minutes, so. Yeah, we, we, have, we have time, so we should we can take advantage okay. of it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, just basically to remind what we discussed about is that uh, we think that uh, in order to make uh, absolutely sure that uh, the path returned by the RPC will be exactly the same as the path that would be computed for tunnel when it's provisioned. Okay, uh, we, uh, I personally, at least, uh, think that you need to provide the entire set of configuration parameters for the tunnel. And the reason for that, that there could be policies uh, used in the uh, like a server path computation that might use uh, parameters uh, that uh, are not necessarily uh, path computation specific. So, and the whole point is that these policies may not be known outside of the server. That's why, uh, basically, to make uh, simply sure that uh, we are not actually compute paths. We basically compute for the tunnel. We set up a tunnel in the mode that basically only computes paths, but uh, doesn't go beyond that. So uh, the discussion on the list was that uh, there is no much harm to keep that because those parameters are optional anyway. So um, that was uh, at least my position in that. I, uh, Tarek from Cisco. I agree with Igor and uh, the fact that the policy model is not there, I don't think it should block your progress um, you know, the attributes can be passed, they can be ignored by the computation server, and when the policy model comes in, they can leverage those optional attributes, if you want to think of it this way. Uh, the, the, the problem is that if uh, we decide to stay as it is, so to, to use just a subset of uh, all attributes and not all, is one thing, in the sense is, is, is like uh, it is the, the, the young model. If uh, we need to have a complete align on the on the attributes, this imply some modification. I'm proposing that you use the full set, although they're but they can be ignored on the server side. Can be ignored because it's optional. Yes, I mean this is my proposal, but maybe you just disagree. Yeah, aren't you just using well, a grouping for? the full set of constraints no, is, is already a grouping. The point right. is that, uh, so in fact, we, we ask to have, uh, actually, we use a temporary solution with our grouping with the subset of uh, all attributes. This is our uh, uh, situation. But it, it, it's, as soon as this policy is, uh, policy is not defined, we do not uh, uh, know why to change. <laughs> because we don't know how to justify to have the list of attributes that is not uh... <clears throat> Well, I think, I think you've just heard justification is, is by providing it, uh, you have full flexibility. Yeah, That's but, the justification. Yeah, but the justification, there is a long, uh, a long mail that has not been answered by our uh, contributors, Francesco, that is explain how and why this Policy is a, a contradictory situation, so it's not. A, but no one has answered this this mail, so this is also why we stick on this point. So basically, uh, what we want to avoid a situation when you ask for path computation for tunnel and comes up with some path, but when you provision a tunnel with exact same parameters, it comes with a different path. 
And the reason for that was that because, uh, say, uh, there was something in the tunnel name on some uh, parameters which are not specific to path computation, there was uh, basically a tweaking in path constraints that were set internally. Uh, and uh, if this happens, it means that path computation is useless, right? Because it provides uh, a meaning, meaningless information. Okay, so what does it mean uh, that the path exists? Uh, when, when you provision the very same tunnel and it goes totally different or so there is no path at all. Let's take one comment from Italo and then we yes. can jump to the next topic. Yes, I, yes, I think that uh, that situation is difficult to avoid and we have another option that we are starting to discuss. Uh, and also if you provide the, uh, the attribute uh, and the user doesn't know that he has to provide an attribute, he can also do the same problem. You create, you set up, you request by computation. You don't provide uh, an attribute uh, that uh, your server is using. And then you request the setup of the tunnel. Then you provide this attribute because you need a tunnel name or tunnel description in the tunnel setup. And then you get exactly the same problem. So it's unavoidable that uh, there is a risk that there is no congruency. And in the next version, in the latest version, we have added the thanks to Drew, we have added a path verification phase. That's the only way you make sure that you get exactly what you want. Uh, is after you have set up, you check that at the end you got exactly what you want. In fact, for me, the problem is not related to the fact that the path then this is set up uh, is different because this is one of the cases we have already yeah. mentioned that. And for this case, we have uh, the path exactly. verification exactly. case yes. that we have. And also covers that, that situation. In the case of policy, you will also be covered. Unless with the policy you want to constrain, that, but that's yeah. exactly what Francesco is saying. Then exactly. you have to specify exactly how policy works. Yeah. You cannot have it hidden. If it is hidden, then you get into a lot of uncertainties. So our position was that, that, that to refuse the fact that the policy is hidden. If the policy is there, okay, it has to be explicit. Um, so, uh, I'm sorry, just last quick comment. I completely disagree with Italo. So, the, the whole point is that uh, all we are requiring is that when you ask for path computation and then you specify exact same parameters uh, for, for the tunnel, you get identical paths. Okay, so if you miss, uh, for example, certain parameters, then you will get uh, uh, the same response in both path computation and the uh, tunnel setup. Okay, so there's, uh, it's not like, uh, for example, the user need to know or doesn't need to know. So the, the point is that if he knows or doesn't know, uh, the, the end result will be the same. Okay, this one comment, right? Uh, and the second comment is that uh, we do not need explicit policies to, to be known outside. It could be uh, something which is totally proprietary to the server, and we still can deal with that, okay, just because we will provide the same set of parameters. All the requirements is just a little bit extra flexibility, that's all, so. Yeah, there's, there's clearly uh, a pretty strong difference of opinions here. Um, uh, I'm not sure if those who would like to see uh, voice the opinion of, of bringing in all the parameters, passing all the parameters, have noticed, but there's some new text that's shown up in section 3.3 that really relates to this on the, on the verification phase. And um, I'm not sure that's been at, fully discussed on the list. And I think maybe you have you talk about it a little more here or no? About the path verification? Very, yeah. No. Uh, so that that's, um, really goes to uh, the heart of this discussion. And when you, it is important that you know, authors have a lot of discretion on how to um, uh, make sure that they're documenting consensus of the working group. And there's nothing wrong with them publishing, putting some new text in and publishing it. But then you have to make sure the working group buys in. So it would be good to talk about those those changes. The path of verification has been discussed in the mailing list before to add in the text, and uh, and was uh, a, a good suggestion from Drew that provide uh, these comments, uh, and uh, then we we follow this comment. Uh, uh, yes, but it opened. Um, I read it as a little broader, and basically leaving the door open for this difference in in policy. Um, uh, being applied or, or the, the, the centralized path being computed differently than what's in the network because of this policy problem. So it's, it, to me, it read as a little bit biased towards one conclusion than the other. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so let, let's keep going. But this is an important thing that to keep the discussion going. We, we have to um, uh, get some consensus here.
and I don't think we have it yet. Okay, but that, it's as you're saying. It's so. Thank you for the discussion. It's good. <laughs> and if we have time at the end, we'll continue. So. Okay. So. Uh, I know. Uh, go back. Okay. No, no, no. It's, it's okay. Um, there, there was another discussion that uh, an issue that uh, we consider. Uh, uh, go back. Okay, there was some mail uh, uh, in the mailing list uh, last time before ITF uh, 102 uh, about uh, the fact that there was some alignment uh, uh, needed about uh, uh, the PSAP uh, uh, features and young models. Um, and one of the example uh, is, for example, uh, now in, in the PSAP there is the possibility to relax and constrain uh, and to permit path computation uh, to avoid taking into account uh, some constraint in case uh, this cannot be in honored. Uh, in Young Model, in TA Tunnel, we have the uh, uh, same feature, but providing completely different mechanisms with uh, an order list uh, of path computed with different constraints and then uh, uh, the possibility to choose one uh, or the other depending on the optimization purpose. So the question for the working group is that uh, if uh, it is needed to have a complete alignment, we need to reconcile that or not. Uh, this is uh, just an example. There are other cases. Uh, uh, I personally provide with the other co-authors uh, of path computation a set of uh, uh, yeah. differentiation between uh, the gap, not gap, but this alignment between PSAP and uh, um, the young model. And the uh, question is that uh, if it is the case or not, uh, that uh, the, 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 the different functionalities can be aligned or not. So Tarek from Cisco. Um, just to clarify the TE tunnel, how the approach that we took, and we discussed this uh, on our weekly meetings and many uh, times. <laughs> yeah. Um, so setting multiple constraints as optional, uh, it it's not clear um, which one would be more favorable to drop on the server side if you have multiple of them that contradict. So the approach that we took is if an example would be you're trying to include links, uh, multiple links in your computation, and you cannot uh, include all of them, so you fall back on the best number of links that you can include. So what we said is optimize the inclusions. So if you can include all, all of them, that would be best. If you cannot include as many as you can. <laughs> so this is the, the approach that we presented in the model is try to optimize inclusion or optimize exclusion if possible. And uh, it's clear then that you're doing the best effort in that. When you're setting the constraint as optional, multiple of them, it's not clear to the server how will they interpret which one is more favorable than the other one. Mm. So, <coughs> uh, Igor, one, uh, one problem uh, that we're having is that we do not have a definition what does it mean uh, constraint relaxation. Right. So, so for example, one interpretation would be is that if you cannot satisfy this constraint, you have to take it completely out of the picture. Okay. The second interpretation could be that you still use this constraint, but treat it like a, basically gently. So you do not uh, uh, refuse uh, the past selection, but, but you basically treat it as not a very stringent constraint. So we, we can address both of the cases, but we do need uh, to define what does it mean constraint relaxation means. Okay, so as Derek uh, explained, we have uh, a way to, uh, uh, to, to do the soft constraints, right? We will do as best as we can to follow the constraint, but we will be okay if we uh, do not satisfy or satisfy it only uh, partially. 
Okay, we also mm. can drop constraints if necessary because we have multiple candidates uh, when we uh, request path computation or tunnel establishment uh, uh, every time when configure a tunnel. So uh, whether we need alignment with a uh, PCM, it's also a good question. So why it has to be this way, uh, I, I do not necessarily uh, understand. Dhruv uh, from Huawei. In my mind, one thing is important is what is the cost of alignment? Is it too much? Because especially in this case, the way if you every leaf has a bit now assigns which says whether you are mandatory or an optional, that will just make our whole, whole Yang model kind of extremely weird. So the cost is too high to align uh, this thing. If we can come up with a very good way, a uh, smarter way to do that and to model it, that yes, uh, uh, some leaves are, because in encoding you have a bit, you can easily do it. In Yang, it's kind of difficult. So even from config, we rarely do that. Like when you are configuring, configuring these constraints, you don't do it. You might have some policy somewhere which might trigger your PSAP request to not set the bit and then set to bit. So if you can come up with a good way to model it, then alignment is always good. But if it's the cost is really high, then maybe we should reconsider. <clears throat> so either I uh, recommend Druv to take a look into this model because we do not we do not actually uh, uh, insist on uh, mandatory versus optional leaves. All we are saying is that, uh, for example, explicit pass could be optimization criteria as much as everything else. And uh, just like you can optimize on the shortest delay, we can optimize on uh, how you follow the the explicit uh, hopes that you specify, okay? If you can do all of them, fine. If you can do only half of them, also fine. And this is all depends how it's related to your other optimization criteria, like delay or cost. Okay, so so we don't say, okay, uh, this could be taken out, or uh, basically all constraints that are specified are mandatory unless you go to a second candidate where which actually excludes them in my mind uh, Dhruv again uh, I like what how the PCEP has specified it's been there from 5440 and uh, it's uh, it's the best we have and the example that Tarek said about hops I'm confused by that because that's like loose hops versus strict hops that's not exactly whether the whole object is mandatory or not in PCEP we used to either the whole IRO that object is uh, optional, not sub-objects. Sub-objects are your loose bit that you have in the sub-object. So we need to discuss this. I don't think so. There are more open questions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, John Hardwick. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not sure how important this question really is. I, I think the way I would think about this is to say that the, the user of this network going all the way up to the operator is is going to want to set up a path with some kind of constraints in mind. And they aren't necessarily going to care whether that set of constraints is translated into PSEP or Yang or, or whatever, right? And, and the important thing is to make sure that we can translate those constraints into either a meaningful PSEP or a meaningful NetConf Yang encoding and make sure that the two things that we specified are functionally complete enough that they can model the same set of requirements that an end user has. I don't think we have to say that they must work the same way, but I, I think it is important that they are able to express the same level of richness in terms of what operators want to, to have. So, so that's why I would look at it. I mean, to take your, your example here, I think we are just looking at there are two kind of equivalent ways of doing the same thing that the te yang model gives you a list that you can choose from um PSEP actually can do the same thing it's a little known thing about PSEP, but the 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 pce can con can return a list of candidate paths to the, the pcc and allow the pcc to choose the one it likes um so so it you know it, it's it's it looks slightly different, but it does the same thing. I don't think we have a difference there. Maybe there are other places where we do have an actual literal difference, and then we have to figure out how to address those. But I, uh, I don't 
see a, a, a problem in terms of as, as long as they do the same thing, I don't think they have to look exactly the same. That's, that's my perspective. Uh, let, let, ju just one thing. The example is just to, to say that uh, in this case, uh, it is not so trivial to understand that it's uh, clearly the same because one is practically uh, a, a variable that uh, can be true or false in the sense that uh, uh, it is mandatory or non mandatory, the constraint. The other one is a mechanism that is not trivial to understand how to work. Uh, in fact, uh, what we want to have uh, is an explanation in the tutorial uh, to explain how does it work. So the, the example is not uh, provided in case, but uh, is on purpose because in this case, uh, the, the alignment is not uh, so easy because it is the same feature, but provided in a different way. Uh, that, yeah. th there are other yeah, cases but... say that the, 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 the distance is just uh, to fix the gap, uh, add something and f full stop. But in this so case, I, yeah. I, I think we've just been been cut off <laughs> um, literally because we're five minutes over. Uh, I'd like to, if possible, you know, this is exactly the type of discussion that is, is perfect for the working group. Right. So we'd like to continue uh, exactly where we are when we meet next, which uh, I'm blanking on when that is. Okay, so it's two, tomorrow at 4.10. So you're, everyone's going to resume the same positions, and, 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 right. and we're, we're going to just continue right from here. This is a different room, so please don't come stand here again. <laughs> Thank you for a good discussion. No, no, so you'll, you'll pick up. You'll, we'll do like a two-minute intro, and then you'll start again.